Right, welcome back to the uh, View from the Allotment and uh, podcast. I say welcome back, it's probably about six months since we've done one. Um, so this is episode one of the 18-19 season. Um, we're about a couple of months into the season and we've got uh, a few talking points already this so far. So I'll introduce you to uh, the usual suspects to my right. Um, first person you'll see is Nick Quantrill, housewife's favourite, the bringer of culture. My housewife's favourite, allegedly, um, at Nick Quantrill on Twitter. Um, further to my right is uh, Rick Skelton. It's not Tyson Fury, for those of you that have written in. Um, he's half the man he used to be, thanks to a crash diet of lettuce and beetroot. Um, at, Rick's, at Hull City Live on Twitter. And furthest to your right is the reason we're all here tonight, the man with the cam, Pete Fleming, who's the, um, amongst other things, Hull City Supporters Trust. Treasure. Something we'll get on to talking about later on. Uh, we'll do the show in the usual three sections. Uh, we'll do a bit about Ferriby, a bit about City, and then a bit about the local non league scene slash football. So we'll crack on with Ferriby. Um, looking at the league table, they were a pretty sight. We're half a dozen games into the season. It's not been the best to start. Although, if you just said we'd take three points off South Shields, we'd have taken that, I think, at the start of the season. Nick, you're probably. Uh, Better place than anybody to talk about Ferriby. What's your initial um, um, reaction to the yeah. events on the well, field so far? I, I think I don't think it's as grim as the league table kind of suggests at the moment. Just because I mean now, now the table starts to settle down after it's seven or eight games for most teams. We've played five out of the top eight so far, um, and you know and we've taken points. Uh, I mean we're still you know obviously it's, it's not great to be in the bottom three at the moment, but I think with the rumored games coming up against teams who are kind of mid table or no mid table. There's a chance to pick some points up and see kind of what potential the team really has. Yeah, I, I put in my notes, and it was something you touched on last night when we were talking about doing this. Um, we've played three of the top four in the league. Uh, we've lost to all four of them. Uh, three of the three of them, sorry. Uh, we've lost a fourth game to the seventh place side. So we have played a higher up opposition, and it ironically, probably the favourites for the league, South Shields. We gave them a good going over. Yeah, we did. We did, and I think that kind of shows just the you know the little tactical things that make such a difference in the league. Because South Shields came, didn't they? We we pressed them with two strikers, so their centre backs just resorted to like basically we we, we just went to clock us, didn't we? They just threw it on the pitch to a striker who was about four foot three. Um, you know, and when he's being marked, <laughs> that was not a joke. No, well, it was absolutely no, terrible. Was. And when he when he's being marked by James PC and Jack Mill, you know, it was the easiest game of the season for them two lads. It's pretty Mick, wasn't there? It's lights to watch. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. even Mick. Um, even Mick. So yeah, you know, if you, get, if you get your tactics right in this league, then you can pick up points. And I think we saw on Tuesday against Grantham when you know the, the little tweaks that Chris Boulder did, um, you know, got the players in the best positions, and it was a game that really probably should have won. You know, even in the last few minutes, I was coming back from two down with ten minutes to go. It's a game that could have still been won. That was nearly won. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. But certainly, uh, well, you were there, Pete. You were filming. Yeah. It was end twin stuff. Um, it was, and it was uh, a dramatic end, dramatic finish. It, uh, if uh, if Danny Norts had buried that last shot, where we going? Chip the dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, kick, kick, kick for touch. <laughs> what a touch. Well done, Charlie. Driving in. Driving in. Oh. 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 The proverbial six pointer mm -hmm. um, has been switched to again Lancaster on Saturday, followed by Scarborough. So we'll have played Scarborough twice this season already, getting out of the way even before end of, uh, beginning of October, which is a bit of a <laughs> bit of a balls up from the fixture committee. But um, it would have been a chance to build a little bit of momentum if we could have beaten Lancaster twice, maybe bearing in mind that the games we've got coming up um, would have been Lancaster, Witten, Stafford. Matlock were all in the bottom half and the surprise package of the division, Gainsborough, in between in a midweek fixture. Um, anybody surprised to see Gainsborough where they are? No, not really. I mean, I think they came down last season, didn't they? Probably unexpectedly. Um, I think they're maintaining the budget, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've got a decent budget. They, they always have had. 
Um, so yeah, I, I kind of thought they'd be up there. I didn't think they'd be above South Shields. I think whoever finishes above South Shields will probably win it. Although, as Nick says, when we've seen them against Ferriby, they weren't that impressive. Um, played right into Ferriby's hands, and mm-hmm. we're, we're probably on the day the poorest team we've seen this season, um, which the league table really belies. Yeah, you only have to have them a little bit, bit too long, don't you? Come to the league quite comfortably over the last three or four years. Um, the manager maybe not as well that hard to kind of win games almost, and you come up against you know, yeah. Ferriby who've got a plan in it and a struggle. I don't know if that'll be kind of a one off or something like that goes along the season. But... Possibly, and it's also, in fairness to Ferriby, it's probably the first game this season where the opposition haven't just smashed in a worldly from nowhere. That's right. It's not it's not great, is it? I mean obviously we went to Mikelova um they played Grantham the other night. Uh, both games were nothing in it, and then all of a sudden there's a there's a goal from a 25, 30 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right back for Grantham and then a centre half for, for Mikelova who'll never score a goal like that again in his life. They've only got one ball, they're shit! <coughs> oh. oh! Oh, fucking hell! Um, and, and, and you're chasing games and probably the same, the reverse in the South Shields game was was fairly got in front. Yeah. South Shields had to chase it didn't they? and didn't do a very good job of it. So, um, yeah, they, they look a decent side at times, Ferriby. Um, look vulnerable at others. Um, we're going to get on to talk about City, but I think Ferriby are like City on a on a really small scale, they're, they're two very similar clubs in the terms of the decline the last couple of years and they're two very similar teams in that a lot of young young players, not really young, but a lot of um, early 20s, very yeah. little experience, uh, a lot of turnover um, and, and then two managers who were decent managers who were trying to do a job um, and they're trying, to, they're trying to build something and they're in a lot of support there. And it's it, it's difficult, but all you can do, same with City and Ferriby, like I said, they've got a squad of likable young players. Um, you can only get behind them, which is you know, like both clubs make it hard. Um, yeah. I think it's been noticeable, yeah. I think that Ferriby looked a lot better when they played with two strikers this season. Um, mm. You know, I, you know, I think the struggle with being one striker because you know you, you want to be ultra fit and be ultra mobile to play that role, and yeah. Ferriby haven't really got that. Um, but I think on Tuesday night we saw that. When, when Chris Bullard had a choice of who he could play at wing backs, and he could release Danny Norton to play in front, yeah. you kind of get that Danny Clark effect from him, do it well, almost. You know, he's not, yeah. he's not going to score a lot of goals to Danny Norton, and that's probably not his natural game, but he's going to hassle people, and he's going to force yeah. mistakes out of people, and he's going to make something happen. He's got that kind of, that kind of like competitive edge, hasn't he? Even Danny. I was going to say nasty, if I would say competitive. He's all But yeah, you know, yeah. He's, going to, he's going to annoy people, isn't he? And I think just having them two strikers, as well as the fans. Yeah, yeah. Put yeah. <laughs> yeah. a bit of pressure on the position, just make, you know, it means they have to play a long, doesn't it? And that, a lot of the time, like, it's always out of shields, and that plays into the hands of the yeah. hand we've got with PC. And, and it's. You know, um, one strike we struggle at. Yeah, with the yeah. City comparison yeah. as well, is um, a lot of City fans get frustrated by playing one striker. I mean, it tends to be how most teams play, but City don't appear to have the striker to do it, and I think very are the, the same. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some talent there. But you won't fancy any of them playing on the road. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, they've worked out a system, whether it be sometimes it's three at the back, sometimes they've gone 4-4-2. Uh, they've got two strikers, and like Nick says, you've got some support, you've got some energy. Um, other times, you see, you know, the win, the win headers, there's nobody on the chase, the um, defenders make mistakes, there's nobody capitalising. Um, so, yeah, I think they've, they've been positive, haven't they? And they've been positive in the subs, uh, certainly in the games I've seen. Um, Subs have changed the games. I know they got absolutely hammered in the FA Cup. But it looked like a hammering. Is, on, on. is that the James Nichols pub? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it, it looked like a hammering on paper. Um, but uh, Ferriby did play some good stuff, didn't they? And certainly yeah. had the better of the second half, but just looked vulnerable 
Uh, it was that one striker thing again, I think, wasn't it? it was that yeah, one yeah, one yeah that one striker. Strike, uh, made the changes a lot better after the break. Yeah. Um, Sam Conce- the conceding game. in the first five minutes, doesn't it? Yeah, no, no, it, was, it was a pause. We, seem, we yeah. seem to struggle to get into yeah. games if, if we're yeah, yeah. immediately down. Yeah. Which is another one with City. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Another, another yeah. City City thing. City thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Scoring the first five minutes and you're never in the game. Yeah. But I, I like that through the back of that I think that suits the players they've got. You know, And I think that little tweak midweek and James is in the middle of the three. <laughs> Made that a little bit stronger as well. Yeah. Um, and then you know, the three in the middle of midfield give Luke Lofts a little bit more sort of time on the ball as well than Jamie Forrest there. Do um, we think it is an age and maturity thing, given the fact that a lot of the midfielders yeah, are? I guess so. The slight of build and the young lads, for all their energetic, very skillful, we don't, we don't quite have that um, muscle in midfield, shall we say. And yeah. we, don't have, we certainly don't have the muscle. But from that, I want to say um, Well, you know, I said in the middle of midfield, I mean, I don't think Jamie Forrester's a shrinking ballot, is he? You know, I mean, he's regularly yeah. kind of getting involved in skirmishes, isn't he, with the opposition? He's yeah, got yeah. that kind of element to his game. But yeah, I mean. But you wouldn't label him as no, a big no, 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 you know, you're not going to kind of pinpoint him as being some kind of butcher, are you? No. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you've, and I know the heading there, probably yeah. the head, would it? But um, you've got to wait for what you've got to happen here. Sometimes a bit of composure to just put the foot yeah. on the ball and. Yeah. But I think, you know, I just thought on Tuesday, the formation <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the personnel was kind of as good as what, you know, what Chris yeah. has got at his disposal, you know, I think, you know, Ben Lennon, that wing back and Jamie Williams on the other side have been revelations since they've come into the side. Yeah. And so I think it was noticeable at Scarborough for all the ball didn't come back a lot when Scarborough attacked because they had, um... Bolshaw. Bolshaw yeah. up front. And you'd think he just, he just showed that little bit of experience, whereas we don't quite have that hold-up play that in turn yeah. keeps yeah. the ball and brings other people into play. It's, Sometimes it's a bit too quick to return yeah. and catches us on the back foot. Yeah, I mean, most, most teams we've come across do have that up front. Like Nick said, South Shields on the day had a... Um, yeah, the main man was... Yeah, the midget, didn't they? But yeah. apparently that was because their, their main guy was... Was, was he suspended? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Is it Finnegan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he got sent off. But, like, uh, Warrington weren't any great shakes, but they yeah. had uh, Steve Brodie up front, who's been yeah. around... Richard Brodie up front, sorry, who's been around... Um, um, Dunstan last week had two big strikers, didn't they? So, um, I think with Ferriby, you've got to be patient with them because it's not only that they're young, um, they're, they're almost all stepping up a level, aren't they? Um, yeah. Yeah, some, know, of them are some of them are stepping up five levels, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. even at even at this um, this level that Ferriby are at. So, there needs to be patience. And again, going back to the city comparisons, I think they just need a, they need a season to be steady. Stay in the league, yeah, um, and keep the squad together because you can't keep turning over the squad year on year. No. Just can't do it. You can't keep trying to find players. You know, if if they lose, if they lose the better players out of this squad who they're improving every week, then again they've got they're gonna have to go back Humber Prem or Northern Counties find more players. Another six months waiting for them to adapt into Evo stick players. It's just yeah, it's um. A, a, like a hamster wheel that they're on right, yeah, at the moment, yeah. and it just the the both both local teams, maybe all local teams. I think we'll, we'll come to some others who aren't doing particularly well either. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. the whole scene at the moment, there's just so much chair. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, the team has been relatively steady, though, hasn't it? Since Chris took over, you know, I think he's kind of settled into a into a squad now, and he's kept the mm-hmm. players over the summer. So hopefully, yeah. there's, hopefully there's that kind of. I think that you can sense the players. Probably know they're improving under Chris Durkin. I think they're on the playing for him. I think that's the key thing, isn't it? Yeah, I as think long as Chris is there, you, I think you could say that bulk of that squad would be there. There's occasional backward steps, but I think yeah. it is getting better. Yeah, yeah. And they're getting more organised and they're getting a bit more yeah. sound yeah. to what they need to do. They, I mean, they, they, do, they do work on things. They, um, like Nick said, they play three at the back. Um, but what they try and do is when they, when they haven't got the ball, um, oh, sorry, when, when they're attacking, Whichever side they're attacking, the wing back goes forward and the rest slot into a four. Um, yeah. You know, to make it a defensive four, um, the you know the full back, the, the, sorry, the third centre half comes across, filling at full back. You can see the things that they are working on and, and the things that they're trying to do tactically, but they don't train that much because they're the 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 semi pro. Um, so they're trying these things out in games and it's not always going to work. No. So. I think I think the key for everybody is you've just got to be patient with them. Yeah, and I think you've got to give a big shout to Lewis and Gold, only Lewis Excel kind of in a summer with all saying what we just, we haven't seen this lad play but <laughs> if anything at all last season and you know, you're kinda of thinking is he gonna be is he gonna step up? Um and he has, hasn't he? You know, and isn't it with some strong, uh, strong competition as well from the 
the Lattimore City behind him as well. So yeah, I mean, I think yeah, yeah Johnny Johnny Saltman's mm-hmm. there, isn't he? And he would he would love to play, but yeah, he needs to play, doesn't he? He needs to play, yeah. But he's he's seriously unlucky because yeah. Ferriby again, best player as a goalkeeper, as it's <laughs> been for three seasons in a row. Steady, steady, steady! No promise, will us. Brilliant position, Jack. Spirits good though. Yeah, I think the team together. Yeah, yeah. I think that showed on Tuesday yeah. night. That yeah. was definitely noticeable on Tuesday, yeah. 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 There was a lot more fight about whether it was yeah. the aftermath of the Dunstan game or what I don't know. I mean I doubt very much they had a bollock in the changing rooms, but they certainly had a bit of a bit of steam and desire about them. Not many teams in this league who come from 2 0 down on a Tuesday night and, and salvage a point, are they, in the last 10 minutes? And that, yeah. that was the encouraging sign, I think, that fight they showed at the end. Yeah. You can put the disappointment of Warren, uh, like a Warrington away and write it off as such. I think the fact they showed a little bit of, a little bit of spirit is the one defining moment of that match. Might just give them a bit of belief going into the rest of the season, especially, like I say, with some winnable fixtures coming up. Yeah, it comes down to goals again, doesn't it? Is there enough goals in the team? And you know, when you're trying to put a team together on, on a on, on a on a shoestring, it's kind of get goal scorers for you know pennies is is tough, isn't it? But you know, well, I yeah, think it's difficult think, because they've got. Um, I think there's a Luke, global spread in there as well. Luke Kingsley who came yeah. and scored twice against South Shields. I think did you say he's gone already? He's gone, yeah, he's gone out this week. Um, so. Maybe because the budget isn't massive, and it is difficult. And when you've got games coming up that you think you've got to win. That's a, that's a completely different game to trying to contain a South Shields or, uh, or catch mm. them on the break. Yeah. Or whatever. You, you've got to go and you've got to impose you've got to go yourself to... on games. And, yeah. uh, not, not having the two Lancaster games back to back might actually be a godsend. Yeah, 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 if, you if you don't play well in the away game, there's yeah. an awful lot of pressure to And them. they've got a new manager, haven't they? Just come in yeah. and say, you know, the opposition always get a lift off that, don't they? So. And to be fair, I don't think it was that bad against Scarborough. I don't, I don't, think, the result, no. I don't think the result reflected the game. No, it wasn't a 3 1 game. No, no. Way. Yeah, it was, a, it was a reasonable first half, wasn't it? And mm. I think Scarborough had some changes and we didn't really get to grips with it, did we? After that's that. right, but, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised how poor Scarborough were in that first half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was again because we've, we kind of harried him into playing long, didn't we? You know? Yeah. And then you, if you do that against people like you know, Jack Mayle and, and James Pearson, then it's, it's easy for them, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you are playing you know, you're not, I mean, yeah. if, you, if you can get on the floor and force them to 10 because the big blokes and it makes it tougher, but if you're going to knock up in the air, then we're just going to make a drink, isn't it? Mm. Um, well, we'll turn to. But, Sorry, well, no, it's just good to see John Mills call midweek. Yeah. Get, get him to zoom in, isn't it? Oh, oh, on, yeah. 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 Yes! Go on, 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 go Yeah, uh, I can't remember. He was leading when I was, yeah. By yeah. about 60 odd percent. Bizarre. Well, I think James has to be a bit, if you're listening, James, you've got to be honest. You've got to tell us. Did, yeah. did he deliberately flick that ball past the goal? It, like it, it, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. The, the last, last player who touches the, the ball on the second team scores. That's, yeah. Yeah. If he's a defender, then you give the goal to the present. Yeah, I know. But he's he's on the same team for himself. Mm. 100 yeah. times. I, I'd give it to Luke. Yeah, so it was I'd Luke's, Luke's all day long for me. Yeah, that was just a stray leg in the way of sticking you without it. <laughs> Nonsense. The, uh, the only um, downside, I suppose, to choose tonight was um, the... Your, your foul and abusive language at the line. Apart, <laughs> apart from that. I think it was all guilty of that. <laughs> and the, the, the terrible attire you were wearing. Okay. But apart from that, <laughs> was the, um, the, the, um, the spectre of a certain... Bald headed man who appeared incognito halfway through the first half. Mm-hmm. Was that you Jamie? Mm-hmm. Right, it wasn't so. me. No. Yeah. Um, Rumours are abound that uh, JW is still on the scene and in turning up halfway through the first half, probably mm. didn't do those rumours, uh, didn't quash those rumours, unfortunately. Um, the club's in a bit of a mire. Um, probably the last thing we need is him back on the scene if that is the case. They're trying all they can, or we're hoping they're going to do all they can to uh, get some interest up for non-league day on October the 13th. 
which is the fixture against Stafford Rangers. Stafford Rangers. Um, we'll be printing a fanzine for that game, issue 10. So if you're watching this and you're attending the game, make sure you grab a copy. Um, post is available. Post is available. Uh, <laughs> details on the at VFTAE Twitter account if you want to order one of them. Yeah, send it in and Darren will put you down in his GDPR. Single list. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's fully, fully taxable records they are. Um, non league day. Yeah. What do we think, or how would we go about attracting a bigger footfall to the game? Bear in mind that there's no professional games on that day. There's been a massive falling out in the city towards Hull City. There's a hell of a lot of football fans kicking around on a Saturday doing nothing. You're the chairman of North Ferrybury. How would you get them down? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look at last, last, I mean, like, back end of last season, it was letting people in with a city pass for a fiver. Do you add money to the gate? Probably not. No. So that was one thing that we've tried. Cutting the price. Probably not. It's a very tricky one. Mm. Agreed. Rick? Um, put Jamie Waltham in stocks. We all get to throw bricks at him. I was going to say, yeah, no, no sponges. No, sponges. <laughs> no, 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 no messing about with sponges, no. Um, no, it's, it is a tough one. I, I think there has to be an attractive offer. There, there are City fans um, out there, laps, and just fans who, who want to see a game. Um, I th well, I think the, the main thing you've got to do is, is get out while it's on and get it out early. And it, it's difficult because, um, you know, when there were two divisions higher, they didn't get the press, but, um, you know, they need something in the press because as much as, um, you know, put things on Twitter and the club puts things on Twitter, and, you know, not everybody's on Twitter, not everybody's on Facebook, yeah, 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 yeah. especially in this area, um, especially maybe the age of some of the people who will come. So that, yeah. uh, they need to find creative ways to let people know that they're playing, I think. Um, and, and something more than just relying on social media because it's, yeah, it's a great tool, but it's not the be all and end all. And you've got to do, you've got to do more. Um, and I think you can't get out there in the in, in the community really. And um, one thing Ferriby do still have is big junior section. A lot of young kids who who go out every weekend playing in Ferriby shirts. To me, that's one of the most probably disappointing things. Is that you know we've been at games this season. I mean, how many little kids do you see? Um, yeah, in fairly yeah, shares, yeah. how many, how many mascots, how many ball boys? Yeah. Um, do you know if you get those kids in? Do you know they'll bring brothers, sisters, friends, parents. Um, so I think you really need to do something about that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. That the club has to do more, don't they? But the, the, other, the other side of that equation is that it takes time and effort, doesn't it? And you got to obviously understand that the people running the club don't necessarily have that time and absolutely, yeah. uh, you know, ability to no, do that. No, it's, it's mean, difficult. That's a tough thing into, but you said the youth program is a gift, yeah. isn't it? You know, I'd, I'd be getting out to them people and offering them, you know, about tickets for a fire or something if you bring your dad with you to the match. Get, you know, every single kid who plays for that youth team set up should get some kind of free ticket for that game, maybe, and a cheap offer to bring an adult. You know, you've, you've got to just kind of throw something at the wall, have you, for this one and really just say, you know, I know mean, a lot of the people who are upset that they pay full price every week, but you've just got to say, you know, this is for the benefit of the club. Yeah. Um, and, and get people in cheap enough. Like, you know, if you get, I don't know, an extra 200 people and then maybe 20 of them will come back to the next game, you know, and you convert a small number at a time. Sure, I mean, you improve the atmosphere yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's something, there's obviously stuff in there like they come up with buy a pie or something, or they'll have a drink in the bar or whatever. Yeah, well, you can't, get, all the add -ons, isn't there? You can't yeah. get people in. And what, yeah. when, once people are in, they'll spend money. And, yeah. you know, I mean, the capacity we'll, we'll keep going on about city, uh, city comparisons. That's the thing at City that, yeah. that nobody seems to understand at the moment is. Um, you know, when you crowds down 10, 12,000 people, not just that now, it's your merchandise sales, it's your, yeah, program, it's it's your programs, it's your pies, yeah. it's your beer sales, everything's down because everything's about footfall and, you know, for some reason football in Hull seems to be the only business that doesn't understand uh, the, the basic rules of footfall. But I think the other thing is as well is, is people want to see it. A winning team. A winning team. A winning team. Yeah. And that's the difficulty with, 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 with therapy is that they aren't necessarily a winning team, they're a young team, there are um, a lot of good people there, but um, 
you know, you know people are going to splash out and say, to go and see good people. Don't want to go see, don't want to go see them win. Yeah, it's um, the same maybe three or four years ago, wasn't it? And they played a heat of football. It'd be pretty at times, was it? But no, be double the crowds, wouldn't they? In the final, yeah, because yeah. you know you'd go there knowing Tom Denton would probably nod you across him at some point in the game, wanting to win you at one 0 but you, you, you've got to try, haven't you? Oh, yeah. And, and I think that's the that's the thing, like Nick said, it's difficult. They are run by volunteers, but you've got to go and you've got to try. Um, and whatever, they, whatever they're going to do, they need to be getting it out now. Um, you know, we need to be giving it two, three weeks yeah, of, of yeah. push. Yeah. Um, you know, so that everybody knows, so that it's local, so that, you know, even if it's just up in the news agents and the co op and the uh, village post office and wherever sure. it is. Um, it shows, yeah. <laughs> Evening, Mike. Um, <laughs> so they've, they've, they've got to get it out. They've got to get it out early, and that yeah. that's that's the difficulty sometimes. As these things come round, like we mentioned yeah. earlier, the Scarborough game is all of a sudden what eight days away. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would have been a great one to yeah. to push. Yeah. 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 Just going back to the point you made about the youth setup. Why not have some of the youth play? You know, youth teams playing on the pitch before the game. Some kind of like. In an exhibition or something. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Well, yeah. Just the ground, don't yeah. you? Know, that's, you? You've got them then, haven't you? You've got reason to come. Yeah, I mean, you've got a row as well. They always have kiddies playing yeah. at half town and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, it's a great tool. I went to, yeah. um, I went to a 2020 cricket match, uh, which was dull as dishwater, to be fair. But um, the, the one thing that really struck me was before the game, there were hundreds of kids, alright fair enough, it's a massive circle so yeah, yeah. Um, you, you can get it on there but yeah the outfield was absolutely full of kids um, having coaching um, from from hours before the game as well, From because it was an evening game, almost second of schools kicked out, yeah. um, tons and tons of kids, boys and girls, all different ages um, and, a bit, and, and there was people there, volunteers who have been, who've been preparing for you know, for hours for all these all these kids turning up, but it was it was a brilliant operation, and that's again like like Pete says, uh, do that far better at the rugby league than they do at the football these days. It's something that you used to always see um, at City was kids playing like half time on little impromptu five a side mm. pitches and mm. um, local local teams who came down. I mean, I took my Hazel Rangers team. Um, I don't know, good ten years ago now. Uh, we went down. The boys played beforehand. Um, had some had some food. Sat in the south stand. Phil Brown came to greet them and make a big fuss of them. And you know, does that sort of thing exist now? Um, if it doesn't, that city, that's something Ferriby should absolutely be capitalised yeah. on because they should be, and and they are more of a proper community club. So need to get that back. Yeah, I think there are some plans in place, aren't there? For or certainly Matthew's put a few plans to yeah. to the committee, yeah. the organising yeah. committee. So hopefully. Uh, some of those plans we're going to go ahead, so uh, we'll wrap up the therapy section now. Um, if you are at a loose end on um, October the 13th, uh, get yourself down to Grange Lane. Um, guaranteed a decent game of football, uh, 10 or less, and you'll be in. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll see us there flogging the fanzine to a bad one. Uh, we'll be back in the uh, second part, I'll talk, of, talk things Hull City, all things Hull City.